what's going on guys? Today I wanted to do a detailed look at the Tenere and more specifically the airbox. Uh, some of the options that you go with, you can go with. So let's dive over to the workbench and get to it. So here I have the various stages uh, from completely factory to a uh, slightly modified stock setup. And then when we jump to the uh, big three, this is the uh, temporary setup we made and jumping over to the DNA. Uh, from the factory, this is the uh, airbox lid. Seals like, actually doesn't seal the airbox, uh, the filter to the airbox, but it actually just holds the filter down. And then when you flip it over, you can see this groove here is actually what seals the filter to the airbox. And then moving over to the snorkels here, uh, you can see I we've taken off uh, 15 millimeters off of the snorkel in the bottom here. Uh, that was the most that uh, Mad TV recommended. I'll have their video in the description below, and and that video has a lot of information on uh, some other modifications you can do to apply a filter to the top here, and uh, why you don't want to cut more than 15 millimeters off of this. So that video will be linked in the description below. Uh, so once we did that, that's about as far as you can go without tuning the bike. Um, and then once we got the big three, we got the uh, Yoshimura exhaust and uh, the uh, ECU flash by Two Wheel Dyno Works. Um, we were waiting on the DNA to come in, but we wanted a little bit more air in the air box. So we modified the lid to this bigger outlet or to this bigger inlet. So compared to the factory air box, you can see there's quite a bit more air going into it, but it's still restricted by the flame arrestor and the smaller cleats. Moving over to the DNA, uh, it took quite a, about a month to get, but uh, we did decide to go ahead and use the lid as well. You could modify this lid to work but we decided uh, it might be too flimsy or uh, wouldn't be a smooth transition. As you can see, this has kind of got like a smooth edge that funnels the air into the filter. And the DNA filter itself, you can see it's got way bigger cleats, uh, no flame arrestor on it, and the opening is significantly larger than the OEM setup. We went with the DNA filter because uh, that's what we had on our FZ07. We've had the DNA filter uh, on our FZ07, and it's been uh, it's been great, and was a noticeable difference in performance. And uh, uh, you might also notice that they, we have a Shirai battery in here. Uh, that's uh, the battery we go with after uh, the bike has a couple years on it and the batteries start to to die. Uh, we jumped over to the Shirai. And uh, that's a, a great way to lose a little bit of weight. And uh, uh, they're really nice batteries. And we have the charging set up for them. We decided to go with that, this setup because we ride mostly on-road. Um, but there is some other options you could go with. You could do the uh, DynaJet lid with a K&N filter. A lot of people do that. Um, really just depends on uh, if you're doing off-road, I would probably lean towards the twin air foam uh, filter and lid. That seems to be a pretty solid setup. Uh, but if you're factory, I would probably, uh, if you're doing off-road, I would probably do the uh, additional foam for the snorkel here. That's also mentioned in the Mad TV uh, video linked below. But yeah, that's kind of our... Uh transition of how we modified the airbox throughout the modifications that we had and uh, look forward to getting the DNA filter in here and uh, should be a pretty noticeable improvement of air going into the engine. But we'll keep you updated on uh, how the DNA filter performs and uh, appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you in the next one.